Good morning! It's uh, the big day! Bonjour, I look like a French widow. I may or may not be completely unprepared for this trip, so I just had to do a little run to Primark, which is, as we know, the most royal and glamorous of all shops, to get some stuff that I forgot to pack. Uh, including a bag, because I didn't think I would need a bag. And because I don't have pockets in my skirt, I had to get a bag. And I also got some cosmetics and brushes to do my makeup, because obviously who packs that? And I also had to get some hairspray and a lot of small things that just didn't really fit in my backpack. And I also didn't think about getting them beforehand. So that's what I've been doing this morning. There's truly nothing like London parks. They're just so peaceful and wholesome and beautiful, actually. Like, you feel like Elizabeth Bennet whenever you walk into one. Unless there's someone peeing by a tree. Now before I start dressing up, let's just talk about this season's fashion. It's the third season of The Crown. You might have gotten used to like the 1950s elegant outfits. This time they're diving into the world of 1960s and 1970s fashion, which is sort of when fashion begins to drift away from this elegant, vogue-like style and a lot of subcultures, a lot of smaller styles and trends start to appear and suddenly it's not all that obvious anymore. So it's a very interesting period because it's one of the first times in fashion history where elegance was not the most important thing anymore, like it wasn't the, the absolute goal. It was sort of the period when women would start to experiment and go a little bit hippie, go a little bit folk, <laughs> and it's especially interesting to see how these fashions affected the royal family at the time because they obviously had to keep all of the elegance, but at the same time they didn't want to be not fashionable and they didn't want to be passe. So, so my outfit is going to be inspired by let's say the latter half of the 60s or like mid 60s but without all the crazy stuff going on because there, there was also this evening wear slash elegant side of the fashion so I was sort of aiming for that and I'm already wearing a 1960s, it's not really a bra, is it a brassiere? And a girdle, which is not going really well because I just ate a tomato soup. I'm already wearing that, I'm not gonna show you because that's basically underwear, like it's different when I show you Victorian outfits. So without further ado, am I sitting on the stuff I just ironed? Yes I am. Liner, which was the trickiest part. To get it even and to get it cut eye and not weird was super super difficult. So I'm moving on to the rest of the makeup now. <coughs> I guess makeup is done. I didn't film the whole thing because A it was boring and B it was too much of a struggle for me to care about the camera. Why is it so dark? No. <laughs> Damn it. So I only filmed a couple of bits and then I just dropped it because it was too intense for me to remember about filming and I needed to get those eyeliners straight. So let's get dressed. It was supposed to be 60s but it looks like anime. So I'll be wearing a skirt by House of Foxy that is actually a 1940s style skirt but I thought I might use it anyway. And I'm going to be wearing a blouse that I made myself because the whole dress code is like cocktail. So I was going for a long gown, but it turned out I can't really do it. So this, the shirt, the blouse is inspired by 
a 1950s blouse that I saw, but also there's a lot of Madame Grace, Madame Grey, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, <laughs> designs from the 60s that feature really huge drapey sleeves. This is what I'm gonna wear. I'm also be wearing a necklace that I bought in a cheap Chinese store and it was like five dollars and I'll also be wearing original 1960s ear clips which is actually nice and 1980s shoes because those were the only modern style shoes that I could find in my closet so I'll be back in a minute. 